One of the most compelling arguments that one can make for the teaching of creationism or intelligent design or so-called alternate theories in the classroom along with evolution is the idea of fairness. If you're going to hear one side of the story, it only seems fair to hear the other side of the story. And I think most Americans, for, for most Americans, that argument resonates. It sounds just great. You want to hear both sides of an issue. Now, the reason this doesn't apply in science is actually pretty straightforward. It's not a question of hearing both sides of an issue. It's a question of whether or not the scientific process is going to be allowed to work. So ask yourself, how do scientific theories, how do ideas and concepts get into a curriculum or into a textbook? The answer is, these ideas originate in the minds of scientists. They propose them. They do research. They develop evidence. They engage in peer review which means they publish their findings, they argue with people with whom they disagree, they produce new evidence to answer those arguments, and gradually over time, if the evidence is on their side, they will win a consensus within the scientific community that their ideas are right, or at least that they're valuable and they have something to offer scientific discourse. And when they do that, quite automatically, those ideas will end up in classroom and in textbook and curriculum. The proponents of intelligent design, or creationism, who say it's only fair to consider their ideas, have a very curious idea of what fairness is. Because they're not interested in developing evidence. They're not interested in engaging in this process of peer review, of publishing their work, of going to scientific meetings and trying to win a scientific consensus. In effect, what they want to do is to do an end run around the entire scientific process by appealing to boards of edu education or legislatures to insert their ideas into the classroom even though they haven't won a scientific consensus. So you have to ask yourself, what's fair about that? That every other idea in science has to fight its way through the criticism and analysis of the scientific process, but these ideas claim that they want to be exempt from that process in the name of fairness. In reality, what they're asking people to do is to cheat on the process of science and give them a shortcut that will get into classroom and textbook. That would be very bad science policy and be even worse in terms of educational policy. Creationists have basically argued three points in supporting creation against evolution. One, that evolution is weak science. Two, that it's incompatible with religion. And three, that, well, it's only fair to te teach both views. Equal time. Uh, the fairness argument is, in many respects, their most powerful one because it really appeals to American cultural values of fair play and free speech and community participation and so forth. Plus, we have it in the United States a, uh, an extraordinarily decentralized school system. This is something that comes as a real shock to Europeans and people in Great Britain and Japan and other developed countries who are shocked to think that a 17,000 independent school districts are making decisions about what kids learn. This makes no sense to them whatsoever. But local control is extraordinarily important in American politics and in American education. This is how we do it here, and by gum, we're not going to change. Nobody's going to tell us any different. And when you think about it, there are a lot of advantages to local control, but curriculum is not one of them. There's no reason to assume that children in you know, BB Arkansas are going to be able are going to be learning math or history or science differently from children in Livermore, California. If you're in fourth grade, you're a fourth grader. Why don't you have the same curriculum? But we have this very patchy kind of curriculum around this country because of this big enthusiasm for local control. Now that kind of local control having a community members, uh, local school boards, voters voting for school boards, all of this action Determining what goes on in the schools is a really deep-set part of American culture and something that we are very uh, unlikely to give up on. And it plays very much into the fairness or equal time kind of strategy of the creationists because they believe that local people should make these decisions, not experts. And of course, local people often don't have the technical knowledge to make these decisions, but it's very hard to kind of persuade folks that they should maybe listen to people who actually know the discipline when they're deciding what they should teach their kids in different grades.
The uh, current controversy about intelligent design uh, points up a basic misunderstanding in how science operates. Uh, intelligent design uh, folks say that because evolution, as far as they know, and perhaps uh, biologists agree, cannot explain a certain fact, therefore the whole theory is wrong, or that there is a controversy in which anti-evolution and evolution are more or less equal standing and, and should debate each other. Uh, scientists love gaps. That's our meat and potatoes. It's the gaps that we cannot explain, which we, if we can explain, will not only advance science, but get us a raise, a promotion, and if it's big enough, make us go down as, as one of a, a, a small group of eminent scientists. So it's the gaps where, where the action is. So instead of saying gaps disprove a theory, gaps are the way things are. Uh, there were many gaps uh, in, in the theory of plate tectonics 40 years ago when it first came out. Gradually scientists have, have closed in those gaps. When people talk about intelligent design today, uh, some of our nation's leaders even say we should put both sides out there. Other people say we should teach the controversy. And I ask myself, if you wanted to teach intelligent design, what is it that you would teach? What would Intelligent Design 101 consist of? A semester-long course, let's say 14 weeks, one hour, uh, three times a week. Uh, what would it consist of? And then what, what is the next level? There is nothing there. There is no content to intelligent design other than to point out suspo suspected flaws in the theory of evolution. So intelligent design is not a theory. It's not anything. It's, it's the antithesis of something. So you couldn't teach intelligent design if you wanted to. So to me, this whole argument uh, makes no sense. Uh, if people want to point out flaws in evolution uh, or gaps, the science teachers should do that, uh, just as they should point out flaws in plate tectonics or, or point out that we don't really exactly know why gravity exists, for example, a big gap for, for one instance, uh, and then talk about uh, creationism if they must talk about it in a religion class.